You know, it started with some tension. I think they put a lot of that behind yeah. them, honestly. They're, you know, they've both grown up a bunch since then, game-wise and, and as, as people. But why not a little little Tabasco in the, in the mix, right? Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Get that Bravo TV drama in there, Andy. <laughs> Yeah, I listen, I, I'd be hypocritical if I sat back, watched that clip, and then clutched my pearls afterwards, wouldn't I? Uh, but listen, I, I I get the back and forth, heat of the moment. Uh, you know, no one actually cares if anyone apologizes on a let cord. Uh, you care if you feel like someone's using gamesmanship for the bathroom break, you know, but it, it's all on the side. Listen, emotions run hot on the tennis court. Uh, you know, some people that I fought with early in my career, I was friends with by the end of my career, it, you know, such is the tennis life, I guess. You think this is normal? He started this. Uh, Jim, make, make the case for Sitsipas to win this one, Jim. Well, I, I certainly clay is a better surface for him. I think the, the muddy track that Andy was talking about that's helped Rabakina's movement, I think has also probably helped uh, Medvedev's a bit here. We'll see the weather doesn't look great the rest of the way, so probably is going to still be a, a better court to stick on than to slide on. But Sitsipas has this forehand that is just so damaging. And he's able to hit it so effectively in all areas of the court. I particularly love his inside-in forehand. I love that he's able to pull this one here and go behind people. I think that can be particularly effective against Medvedev. And he's used the drop shot a little bit more than we're used to seeing as well. He used it against Chorch nicely. I think that'll be something he'll want to deploy also. When these guys met in Cincinnati last year, he used a lot of variation, a lot more slice backhands, more drop shots, more serves and volleys to stay out of kind of long, expanded rallies with Medvedev. Yeah, I don't think he'll be as afraid of those here on this surface, but I still think it's the forehand that finishes for him. The, the inside out forehands, that's the blue side. That's where he's in the backhand corner, ripping it into that backhand of Medvedev. And then I just love when he's pulling them down the line from that same position. You just don't know what he's going to do. He does not have a tell on that. He can hit either with impunity. And then you see some of the shorter ones there. He's using the drop shots as well in this tournament. So that, that for me, is going to be the key. As, as Tsitsipas's forehand goes, I think the match goes. All right, hasn't dropped a set all tournament. Jim just made the case for Stefano Tsitsipas. Andy, look at me, look at me. Make the case for <laughs> Daniil Medvedev. Stevie, 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 <laughs> this is not real. Uh, listen, it's, it's going to be uphill sledding. Uh, I, I have a feeling that Jim got first pick here on the make the case debate, but here we are. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Daniil Medvedev. That's no, there, there, there's no secret there. What he's done this week in the, 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 the improvement I've seen from last year, where he didn't win a single match in the lead up to the French Open to this year, where he's consistently winning matches and now emphatically uh, winning matches. This guy's uh, the uber problem solver. And, and what you see here, his movement is just insane. For someone that's six foot seven to be able to defend this amount of territory. I mean, that's corner to corner, back to front, and to be able to flip that in there in enough time to flip it with topspin. That's something that I don't care how much firepower you have, you have to solve for the awkwardness that is Daniil Medvedev, and the guy can serve 135, 140. Now, I think Jim is spot on. The, the Sitsipas forehand from the middle of the court, as we see a, 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 the, a, a, apparently the Pac-Man version of what we just watched, but the... <laughs> The, the way that uh, Sitsipas is going to be able to get that forehand from the middle of the court and dictate. Medvedev knows, uh, at least uh, he knows what Jim knows as far as that shot goes. Now, Medvedev is going to have to force it into the backhand corner a little bit more than he likes. He's normally content to feed the middle, keep the ball down, and try to make someone uh, attack from a place that maybe is a little bit too early or from a place that's uh, maybe a, from a place of a, maybe not totally comfortable. But I just love the way he's returning. I don't think Sitsipas' serve is going to get through the court as much as it normally does. He's not going to miss returns. And weirdly, the pressure's on Steph because this is his surface, right? He's kind of freewheeled it the last couple of times uh, against Medvedev on surfaces that we would probably favor Medvedev. So, uh, listen, most of the time you favor Steph on this, but I love what I've been seeing from Daniil Medvedev this week in Rome and in Madrid for that, for, for that matter. Uh, he's won nearly half of his return games, Daniil Medvedev, in Rome. Tsitsipas has only been broken three times. So something's got to give Ooh. in this matchup. 